Hey, Trevor Matthews here. I hope you're having a fantastic evening. I've been having a great week so far, learning a ton of stuff, investing in myself, um, listening to lots of different podcasts, watching tons of YouTube videos, just investing in myself. I've been getting a lot of calls in the last actually couple of weeks um, for troubleshooting help. And what I want to do is kind of just give you a quick glimpse on how I help people uh, with Emerson products and how I troubleshoot. So first step is knowing where the information is that it's going to help you. I know it's tough to take the time to read manuals. I've been in the field. I work lots of different jobs and I've cut corners before on the manuals. I skip pages, tried to find the the information I'm looking for, the answer that I'm looking for quickly. It's not the way it should be done. I learned over the years that you need to read the manual from start to finish if you want to be proficient on what you're working on because there's lots of little tips and tricks in those manuals that you're skipping over. And most of the people that I talk to that do that, they say they have to go through the manual four or five times looking for the same thing and they're like, oh, well, I skipped this and I skipped that. So I'm going to show you a quick uh, resource that I use on a on a daily basis. So you go to uh, Emerson, uh, no, sorry, climate.emerson.com. This is the main Emerson web, uh, web page for uh, climate. Uh, so commercial residential solution, the division I'm in. You go down and you click right here. Copeland Online Product Information. When you get in here, there's lots of cool features. You just want to go to Publications and Bulletins, learn more. U.S. Publications. If you're other parts of the world, you can uh, you can go down to Latin America. So Application Engineering Bulletins. You click on there, and here is all the compressor manuals, all the electronics that we talk about, variable speed drive information. These are what are designed by our application engineering uh, and our tests and our lab uh, teams and develop these manuals. So if we go into compressors, there's multiple options. You get uh, semi-hermetics, you get refrigeration, you get air conditioning. Let's just go into refrigeration. So if you were working on just say the new ASVF variable speed reciprocating compressor, you're going to want to go into this manual here. So if you're working on any of these variable speed, these new ones that we just came out with, and here is all the information. It talks. It gives you the warnings. It goes into the introduction of it. It talks about the compressor data, the power supply, uh, the the refrigerant R290. R290 can't be used as a retrofit refrigerant. You know that we highlight stuff in. Uh, we bold stuff. Here we go. Operation envelope. Discharge line temperature 225. Discharge back or 275. Oil sump 200. So these are the limitations of the envelope, and this is how you're going to get better at troubleshooting compressors and understanding how to install them, how to use them and uh, and really work on them properly. Overload protection, lubricants, there's so much great information here. And this is just one, right? I can go back here or I'll just skip back over and just say, I get this week I got multiple calls and digital compressors and last week multiple calls and digital compressors, but here's parallel application for upgrading to a digital compressor. Okay, it's four into the So when you get in here, once again, it talks about the gasket codes. It, it has so much information, the torque patterns, the torque specs, how to install it, all the, what you need to do this install. This Here's the retrofit kit, when you're doing a retrofit for to a digital compressor. Here's all the part numbers. So when you call up your distributor and wholesale, you can tell them exactly what you need, what kit you're looking for, because you need the right kit for the right compressor. So here's a great example here. Um, talks about the valve plate gasket number. Check if the compressor pumps. What side of the head that you need to put it on? Where you put the discharge temperature probe? Right? Where do you put the solenoid? How do you use the controller? You know, setting it up to the E2 if you have an E2 on your system. So, lots of great information. And this is just for um, you know the refrigeration compressors. If I go back, it has all the other great guides in here too. If you want to do capacity control. Right, so if it's oh here it is digital capacity control for refrigeration scrolls. That's kind of the one I was looking for. It was in the total wrong spot. But talks about the envelopes, um, application settings, how to size, like how to size the proper one right here. 
it explains the digital compressor should be greater than the, the first fixed compressor. And then the second one should be uh, less than uh, D1, uh, D, the digital one, plus the fixed one. So there's a process on how to optimize and size it perfectly when you're doing a multiple compressor application so you don't have any gaps. You know, it doesn't always work depending on the rack. And if you have two, two Ds and two 40s, well, we don't have a 2D digital. So these are where you need to go to get the information that's going to help you install, service, and troubleshoot Emerson product better. My name is Trevor Matthews. Let's get a conversation going.